So Stardew Valley 1.6 just came out. There is a lot. It's a doozy. We're going to go through this piece by piece. This first video is going to be simply reading through all of the patch notes. It is extensive and it still doesn't cover absolutely everything that was added to the game. We'll also go over which things I predicted correctly. It's not a lot, but the things that were predicted were very satisfying. I'll have another video out soon of me exploring the update. For now, enjoy this one. There it is. All right, all right, all right. Let's, uh, let's start going over them. Let's read some patch notes. Added new festivals and events. The Desert Festival is a three-day event in spring, which can be accessed after the bus is repaired. So that's probably year two for most people. Two new mini fishing festivals, Trout Derby and Squid Fest. That's it. That's all we know. A new environmental event in summer. Uh, maybe similar to like the the spa opening. Added a mastery system accessed via a new area, which grants powerful new perks and items. Jesus. Added a new farm type, Metalins Farm. Has a chewy bluegrass the animals love. Same thing we got earlier. And a coupon two chickens. So that's big. Added many new NPC dialogues, including custom gift reactions, dynamic dialogues, which react to things that happened. Custom flower dance acceptance. Restored missing dialogue like Emily and Shane's Flower Dance custom acceptance dialogue. Maru's 14 heart event dialogue that got deleted. Okay, just details. Stuff you wouldn't recognize. You can now get multiple pets after max hearts with your starter pet. That's pretty crazy. Added a world map for Ginger Island, visible when visiting the island. The world map now shows your actual position, which we knew a long, long time ago instead of like approximating it in the area you're in. Pets that love you will sometimes give you gifts. That, that's a popular mod that's being implemented there. That's one thing I love about a lot of what's being changed here. A lot of it is like adding mods into vanilla that are like popular, they fit in vanilla so that console players can get to experience them too. Same thing, NPCs now have winter outfits popular mod. Can't wait to check all those out. Festivals now have map and dialogue changes every second year, except the Nightmark and Desert Festival. That's one thing we talked about. Hey, hey, guess what we get to use? Boom. I was saying how the egg hunt gets slight changes in year two, and I'm hoping all the others do too. There it is. Added a golden Joja parrot, which can pay to find all remaining golden walnuts. Uh, that seems powerful. But hey, I'm, I'm sure that's expensive. Added perfection waivers, a new JoJo way to bypass perfection challenges. Interesting. Added a prize machine in Lewis's house. You can collect prize tickets as a reward for completing quests and special orders and from repeated egg and ice festival wins. Hmm, I'd assume that would be mostly furniture related. A bookseller comes to town twice a season. There's no current books in the game other than the ones you find for the library. Don't know what that's... Maybe that's what that's for. Speed that process up. Added mystery boxes. So those are those things that were sh shown in some of those images, I think. Added a big tree with a quest line that ultimately gives you some new neighbors? New NPCs? Added four new crops. Carrot, summer squash, broccoli, and powder melon, which can't be purchased at the store. Okay, and two new giant crops. We were shown the key fruit one. Added four new home re renovations, a dining room, an attic, expanded corner room, and a cubby. Okay, wow. Added new items, oh God, here we go. Big chest, we were shown this before, which has almost double the size of a regular chest and can be placed onto a regular chest to upgrade it. Dehydrator turns fruit into dried fruit and mushrooms into dried mushrooms. New artisan good, maybe. Mushroom log produces mushrooms and interacts with nearby trees. Bait maker, which can produce fish specific baits. So like if you want a Dorado. Heavy furnace, which can produce more bars at a time and yield bonus bars. Okay, very similar. Wait, hold on, hold on. Two very similar to uh, Minecraft items. And a fish smoker, which produces smoked, smoked fish, doubling the value of the fish. And I'm assuming they'll be edible. You get one by default when starting a new Riverlands farm. Ooh, Riverland farm, buff, nice. 
Text signs can be written on. We've saw, seen that before. Also, that's going to be a fat, fat, fat. I told you so. Anvil, which allows you to reroll trinkets. I don't know what trinkets are supposed to be. That sounds new. Uh, unless it's referring to artifacts, but I don't know what the use of that would be. Mini Forge acts as a dwarvish forge. So on the farm, don't have to go all the way to the top of the volcano, it looks like. Statue of Blessing grants a random blessing each day. That could be anything. Uh, a, a random buff, I'm assuming. Statue of the Dwarf King allows you to select one of two mining buffs for the day. Tent kits allow you to build a tent which can be slept in for one night. That's crazy. That's cra- that one's crazy. Oh, I'm fishing, I'm fishing all the way until 2 a.m. Boom, tent, sleep, back to it. Treasure totems, which spawn a ring of dig diggable spots. Cool. Mystic seeds grow a unique tree, which can be tapped. Okay. Mystic syrup, a valuable tapper up product. Deluxe bait gets fish biting faster than regular bait. So, do, so does wild bait. I'm assuming it'll be a 75% increase to speed. Challenge bait allows up to three fish to be caught at once, but loses one each time a fish leaves the bobber bar. Wow. Deluxe worm bin, which upgrades the regular worm bin to produce deluxe bait. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this one. Boom. Worm bin buff. It wanted it, it needed it. 19 unique books of power, which grant special perks. That must be what the, uh, there was a bookseller. Yeah, bookseller. That must be what that's for. Let's see. Moss, a new resource type. Guess what? I specifically said that the green sprite we saw looked like moss. Mixed flower seeds. Cool. Sonar, sonar bobber, which shows the fish on your line before you catch it. It's another mod being integrated. Raisins, which have a special use. I like that on its own. Raisins, which have a special use. Sea jelly, river jelly, and cave jelly. New item that you can fish. Oh, those are three new fish. That's what they are. I was like, jelly? Why would you fish jelly? Seven trinkets grant powers related to combat. Once again, that comes back to the uh, trinket randomizer we saw earlier. The, the uh, anvil. Red, purple, and green fireworks. We knew. Star drop tea, which makes an excellent gift for anyone. So another universal loved item, it sounds like. 25? No! I'm gonna have to make heavy changes to my hat, my hat spreadsheet. I didn't think 25. That increases the current amount of hats to 118. 280 new furnitures, new unique furniture catalogs, which contain theme furniture sets. Oh, that's neat. Maybe cheaper than the existing furniture catalog. 41 new floor styles, 24 new wallpapers, golden animal crackers, mannequins, which can be dressed. Ooh, cool. So like, uh, you can basically display your outfits. That's neat. Spouse portraits, which can be purchased after reaching 14 hearts, kind of like Animal Crossing. Butterfly powder, which allows you to remove pets. Okay, bluegrass starter. So it sounds like bluegrass is an actual item, not exclusive to the meadow farm. Moss soup, secret items. Can't wait to find the new secret items. You'll see a video on that later. Added the goby fish, that's four fish total now. Added some new remix bundles, ooh, that's fun. Can now place hats on cats and dogs, we knew about it. You can now upgrade the copper panda, steel gold and iridium. Did I predict that? Maybe, I'm not 100% sure if I predicted that, but we kinda knew it needed to happen regardless. You can enchant pans with archeologist generous fish herd reaching. Uh, added a special items and powers tab to replace the wallet. The wallet area now tracks the selection of progress markers. I don't know what any of that is supposed to mean. Maybe like your uh, daily upgrades that a lot of the previous items were giving. Added an animals tab that shows you your pets and animals. You can now build pet bowls in Robin's shop. We do that already. Farmhouse and pet bowl can be moved. Knew that already. Farm computer can be used anywhere, knew it. Mini jukebox can now be used on the Ginger Island farm. I didn't actually knew that, know that it didn't work before. Added a new side tunnel to the quarry mine. Huh. Added a new interaction to your horse. Don't know what that's supposed to, maybe like petting it. A community center fish tank now becomes actual fish tank when you complete it. Ooh, 
That's neat. Added more secrets and Easter eggs. Added two new cat and dog breeds. I think someone in chat was saying there were black cats now. Added eight. Oh no. This is the first time that there's been new achievements since the game released. 1.1, 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 did not have new achievements. There's new achievements now. Okay, new achievements. Uh, well read. Read every book. We read about what the books are. Two thumbs up. See a movie. Okay. Get first place in the Stardew Valley Fair competition. Delight the governor. Okay, so it seems like getting... There's like an achievement for every... Winning every festival. Help your forest neighbors grow their family. That sounds like Junimo's. To reach the bottom of the dangerous mines, obtain the most powerful weapon. The title of the achievement is infinite power, so I'm assuming the infinite sword or, or infinity sword or something. Reach Ginger Island and perfection, reach the summit. Okay, so it's retroactively adding new achievements for stuff that was added in previous updates. Uh, can we talk about Baby Toss now has a chance to crit? Four new cabin variants added Oh yeah, because there's uh, eight players now. Added a few more accessory options in the character creation. New bobber machine in Willy's shop with 39 bobber styles to cho choose from. New styles unlock by catching new kinds of fish. Added a cameo appearance to Maru's 14 heart event? Like as in a real person showing up? Or like a character cameo? Emily has a new rare socialized daily quest if you completed the introduction quest. Huh. So like... I'm assuming one of the things you can see on the help board, just like talk to someone. You can now add anchors, treasure chests, and pearls to fish tanks. Okay, all items that previously existed. Pierre now sells a few random items during the Winter Star booth at a markup. Added a jingling sound when running with the cinder clown shoes on. That's awful. That's so terrible. Did I miss the turtle pet? Wait, I did. Added turtle pets. That's big. Added a skull cavern statue that can be used to toggle hard mode in the skull cave. Okay, nice. We already had that for the mines. Added additional chests to the skull caverns, levels 200 and 300. Okay, so every time you go into floor 100 of the skull cavern, it's a treasure chest room. Now it's uh for the next 200 and 300 now. Added a unique skull cavern chest appearance for level 100, 200, 300. Huh, I wonder if that means they'll have unique items. Added a high note C5 to the flute block. I'm assuming that'll just make more songs possible. Added iridium golems to the wilderness farm. So like, as you level up your combat, you start to see stronger enemies like uh, the purple slimes and iridium bats on the wilderness farm. Sounds like you'll get iridium golems. I wonder if they'll have a higher chance to drop the hat and see changes for mod authors. That's a lot of changes under the hood for mods that I've talked about multiple times. Added waterfalls, mod content. Added more holiday decorations in winter. Added more pathstones to various maps. Added jack-o'-lanterns after the Stardew Valley Fair in fall. Added seasonal world map variants. We knew about that ahead of time. Added a rare, a new rare ambient critter. I wonder if that's what those frogs were maybe, because it didn't say there was a new frog animal yet. Added an uncommon little brown bird. Redrew the world map to better match the in-game locations and be more detailed. We'll check that out. Boat journey textures are now seasonal and reflect the latest valley map. So the first time you go to Ginger Island, it shows the boat going down. The bus stop now has a wider map, although the distance to traverse it is the same. Cause yeah, if you zoom out too much, you get the black bars. Jelly pickles, wines, and juices are now colored based on ingredient items. We knew that, and that's very cool. Another mod feature. Many town trees are now actual tree objects, although you can't cut them down. I'm not sure what that kind of means for gameplay. Slight adjustment to the way items pop out when dug from the ground. Updated volcano gold ore node sprites. Okay, interesting, but not the iridium ones. So copper and silver, or copper and iron always had unique sprites in the volcano, and now gold does too. I wonder if that means that they'll also have the reduced amount of hits they need. Some trees have a chance to lose their leaves in the fall. Ooh. Riverbanks and lake shores in the mountain town and forest areas now have le are less jagged. Improve the art of George and Evelyn's roof. Wait, I never like paid- is, was it like shitty before? Um, if you destroy mine's chest, it now shows some graphic debris. Graphics debris. Added special backplates to fortune teller TV show if you get a perfectly good or perfectly bad luck day. Neat. And a bunch of lighting changes. It now gets out, uh, gets dark an hour earlier in winter. Night tiles uh, now activate an hour earlier in all seasons. Indoor daytime lighting now smoothly transitions to night. Neat. Night lighting in non-farmhouse indoor locations is slightly darker. Farmhouse lighting. Okay, this is a lot of lighting. TV and trees. 
Wait, TVs give off light? Oh, that's so cool. That's gonna be so aesthetic. Added light sources to window light glows so there's no more dark but lit windows. Removed lighting quality option. It now permanently sets to ultra quality. I never knew what the difference was anyway. Multiplayer changes, eight players on PC. Improvements to performance and stability, which someone asked me that in my multiplayer video. Improvements, large multiplayer packets are, okay, that's data stuff. Uh, you now need the same build number to join a multiplayer server. This prevents crashes due to changes between builds. Accepting a key challenge that increases the mine difficulty now only kicks other players out of the affected mine type, not all mines. Purple shorts no longer show a chat message when placed into the luau soup, so it's a surprise. All right. Jump down mine shaft sound now plays for all players in the level rather than just the jumper. Here we go, baby. Balance changes. What's the purposes of buying perfection? Challenge runs. Uh, a lot of people don't like specific things like Slayer challenges, so it's kind of an accessibility option. You can think of it that way. Added a box with three tent kits to the Ginger Island jungle. Weapons found in the wild now have a chance to come with a basic innate enchantment. You can reroll innate enchantments. What? I'm assuming that means like chests in, in the mines in the Skull Cavern. Oh, if the weapon should have one at the forge using a dragon tooth. Wait, does that mean you can have multiple enchantments? If there's an innate enchantment and a forged enchantment? Slime hutches are now significantly smaller. It's a good change. Uh, more people will probably try them out in that case. Farm animals now gain a little happiness if you close the animal. No! No! So for the longest time, there was a myth that you had to close the animal door or else your animals lose friendship. And now it's true. For years I've told people, no, it's not true. And now every time someone watches one of those old videos where I'm like, you're wrong, I'm wrong now. Grass now survives in winter, although it won't spread. We knew about that. Mushroom cave comes with a free dehydrator. Okay. I feel like the mushroom cave was already the more powerful cave. Interesting that it's getting a buff here. Changed recipe skill requirements for the charcoal kiln cookout kit. That's a good one. I think I think that warrants a told you so. I said it should be better. Survival burger goes to level eight. Makes sense. Tapper to level four and the worm bin to level four, baby. That's another I told you so. Let's knock it down to level four. Close to when you unlock the fishing rod and crab pots that can actually use the bait. There it is. There it is. The worm bid doesn't need a buff, everyone said in my video where I specifically tore into the worm bin. Two buffs so far. Most home renovations now cost money, which is refunded if you undo the renovation. Reduce the fairy dust sale price from 500 to 300. Okay. I don't I don't think that's important. I don't know. Reduced the tea sapling. Oh god. Oh my God. Oh my God. Bring in the hate. Eat it all up. Om nom nom. Get absolutely destroyed. Reduce life elixir sell price. Eh. Building cabins no longer requires materials, only the 100 gold price. Okay, that's interesting because cabins always took like different materials. So if you wanted a certain aesthetic look, you had to get specific materials that you may not remember. So that's nice. Raised price of the second house upgrade from 50 to 65, but reduced the hardwood hardwood nut needed from 150 to 100. All right. Reduce the... Yeah. Yeah. Yep, increase the cost of warp totem farm in the casino from 500 to 1,000. Makes it less of an infinite money maker. Raise the price of bar bombs in the dwarf shop. That sucks. Raised some hat prices from the hat mouse. Okay, previously they were all 1,000 gold, so apparently it's not gonna be even now. Shop changes. Limits on the casino stock. It is no longer an infinite money source. That's crazy. So now challenge runs don't have to put the arbitrary rule of no casino. You can now buy all brazier recipes at Robin's shop at once instead of in sequence. Okay. That was just like a weird one. -off. Like no other item does that where you have to buy the previous one to get the second one other than like the backpack upgrades. Item drops. Chopping down a fruit tree yields the appropriate fruit sapling. We knew about this. Um, and fruit saplings now have a uh, quality which is weird. Chopping down a tea bush gives back the tea sapling. Ooh. So if you wanted to make a lot of money from tea saplings, say you crafted a bunch like 
right before the last week of the month. So tea saplings only produce the last week, every day. You could harvest the tea for the seven days, chop it down and then sell it. And then I think you would make more money than you'd make if you just sold it. There's now a small chance to find cosmetic items and other goodies while doing random tasks. Snake vertebrae are now easier to get. God bless, we knew about that. Train cars which carry wood now drop hardwood. Santa's train car neck can now drop gifts. Ooh, this is a told you so. I said the train should more often drop items and it should be better items because no one ever sees it. Reduced prismatic shard drop rate from iridium nodes. Okay, slight nerf. Rare yellow slimes now drop money. We've never seen money drops before. I wonder what those will look like. Uh, brown slimes now drop wood. Botanist perk now applies to items dropped from trees. Whoa. Huh. Reduced chance of fishing void mayonnaise at the witch swamp. Okay, it was actually a really good money maker, so that's probably why it got changed. Gift chase changes. Adjusted gift taste for several NPCs. Interesting. Treasure chests are now a universally liked gift except by Linus. Um, I wonder if that, you know how Shane still likes beer after his uh, seven heart or whatever it is cutscene? I wonder if that's changed. Skill XP changes. Please show level ups as they happen. Mushroom logs and mushroom boxes now grant five foraging experience. Cool. Uh, another buff to mushroom caves. Harvesting berry bushes now grant grants one foraging experience per, per berry. Harvesting forage crops from wild seeds now gives much less foraging experience, but grants, grants some farming experience. Monsters on the farm now give combat experience. Yes, but it's a third of the normal value. That's fine. Combat adjustments. Extended the area of effect of downward facing melee attacks. We knew about this. Um, normally, like, so it's better to fight enemies above you because your sword extends farther, but below you, it kind of like crosses your feet, which is still your hitbox. So it's easier to take damage when you're fighting below. So that's even now. Oh, there it is, baby. Boom. Whoops. <laughs> Precision stat is not real. It's gone. Topaz ring now gives defense. Uh, raised insect heads damage. Ooh, that's a pretty good buff. Might be worth uh, grinding for that in the early game now. Kudgel's critical attack power has been increased. Bombs now affect terrain features like trees and crops within the round explosion radius, radius rather than a square area. I actually wasn't aware of that. Slightly increased rate at which skeletons throw bones or shoot spells. Cool. Junimo cart adjustments added grace jumps in Junimo cart where if you run off the track, you can still jump for a short time to recover. Okay, that's interesting. I had actually heard that a few days ago and I thought it was uh, just a rumor, but that's true. So Junimo cart's gonna be easier. Your score is saved if the minigame forcibly exits while playing endless mode. Nox noxious gas emitting mushrooms no longer appear in pairs. Nice. Reduced bubble spawn rate and whale level. Good, all good changes. People really hate a Junimo cart, so maybe that'll make it a little bit more bearable. Machines, worm bins now need a lower fishing level and produce more bait. Holy, holy shit. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The materials cost too much, it's unlocked too late, and it's inconsistent. Literally all of that fixed. All the three major points. Finally, for its production, I'd change the two to five bait to just a solid five bait a day. And if you still want it to have some random chance, four to five bait. There it is. There it is. Exact. You know, I said I I wouldn't like put myself on a pedestal to be like, oh, he watched my vi He got that from me. Maybe. I'm not saying it. Anyways, let's continue. <laughs> okay. Anyways. Loom now has a higher chance for double cloth when processing quality wool. Cool. Um, sheep might actually be a very good money source because of that. Fish ponds now have a chance to produce extra row whenever they produce row. Geode crushers no longer take coal. Uh, I don't think that's a, I told you, you so, because I don't think I said that specifically, but I did say geode crushers need an extra reason to be used. Um, adjusted penalties when knocked unconscious. You can no longer lose the Golden Scythe, Infinity Weapon, or Tools. We knew about this. You can no longer lose more than three items. Ooh, that's nice. The amount of money lost now scales to how much you have. It's now less punishing if you don't have much money, but more punishing if you have a lot. Raises the maximum loss from 5,000 to 15,000. That's fair. I think if you're an extreme late game and you're like, oh, I'll only lose 5,000. Now it's actually a threat. Stojacola now gives a very short speed buff. That's fun. 
green tea now gives plus five speed. Uh, I don't know how that compares to coffee. But that's another buff to tea saplings in the right way. Added coal nodes to the volcano dungeon. Wait, that's another mod feature. Coal nodes aren't vanilla. Barrels now spawn on skull cavern levels divisible by five. Neat. Reduce the maximum possible effect of a bad luck day can have on finding a prismatic slime. Prismatic slime buff. Needed that desperately. Reduce number of bugs to kill for monster slayer. Go. Ooh. Okay, hold on. So reducing the amount of bugs for the monster slayer goal and then earlier the insect head damage is increased from 10 to 20 to 20 to 30. that's gonna be really good i think i could absolutely recommend going for that now like going out of your way bundle changes made remixed specialty fish and analogs uh reward five dish of the sea to make it consistent with the classic bundle Riverfish Bundle now gives Deluxe Bait, and improves some common community center rewards. Adjusted crafting recipes. Speed Grow now requires five moss instead of one clam. I'm excited to see where exactly the moss comes into the game. Deluxe Speed Grow now requires five bone fragments instead of a coral. Makes sense. Quadl quality Dirtalizer, which is my favorite item, Quality Dirtalizer, um, now requires four sap instead of two, but produces two per craft. Still only requires one fish. Wait. So that's a buff. That's a straight up buff. Spouse changes. Spouses now have a seven day honeymoon. We saw that uh, sometimes. I think it's completely random. I don't think it's based on anything like friendship or anything. Sometimes they're just like, oh, I'm going to sit in bed. Kissing your spouse and giving them a gift on the previous day. Each reduce the minimum heart level threshold for a bed ridden day by one heart. Friendship gain is reduced by 33% for spouses. Ah, oh, dang it. Rebalance the crop fairy event. The chance no longer depends on the number of planted crops. It can no longer happen on the last day of the season to avoid growing crops that might die overnight. It can no longer choose dead crops to grow. That's funny. I showcased that multiple times. Increase the shaving enchantments effects on giant crops. I think giant crops do need a buff because right now they kind of are very underpowered. Mushroom Cave now produced mushrooms every second day. It was unintentionally changed to daily in 1.5. That was already updated in like 1.5.3. Uh, you can no longer plant trees on the beach farm tunnel. Huh, weird. I didn't know you could do that. Randomization no longer produces simple repeated ink patterns in many cases. Oh no! speedrunners and shambles oh you can there's a legacy randomization option okay 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 we're good spreading weeds can no longer destroy artifact spots cool the number uh increase the number of monsters that daily monster quests ask you to slay in some cases added more custom quantities for example dust spirits spirits yeah they're sprites those are dust sprites right there okay just wanted to make sure i wasn't seeing things we'll now ask for 10 to 20 kills Till dirt on the island farm now decays the same way as the regular farm. Slightly increased time you have to push against farm animals before passing through them. We kind of knew that already. Uh, that applies to pets as well. Slightly boosted quarry output. Daily quarry output now increases each year up to a limit. You can no longer plant trees in town. I didn't know you could. Secret notes are no longer created during festivals except passive festivals like the night market and desert festival. Oh, the desert festival is... Passive? Oh, that's so exciting. Adjusted fish variety and ice fishing festival. Okay. Quality of life now. Performance improvements. Yay. NPCs now shove chests out of the way instead of destroying them. That's poggers. If Pam won't be coming to the bus for any reason, she now leaves a sign informing you, and you can drive yourself to the desert. Shiny do poppin' bottles over that one. Audio changes. Sounds are more positional. We knew about this beforehand. Positional sounds now fade in distance and soften the bomb fuse sound. That's good. The music ducks out and resumes when certain sounds are played instead of stopping. You can now strafe while charging watering can or hoe, allowing you to reposition your tool hit area. That's nice. That's that's actually a really big one. Y'all may not realize how big that is. You can now refill slingshot ammo by right clicking it with the same ammo. Previously, that would swap the item stacks. Oh, I didn't know that. Planting cactus seeds on the farm now fails with a message instead of saying the seeds dying overnight. Holding a tea sapling or seed over a garden plot now shows the green red placement tile. You can no longer pick up rugs if there's something on it. God bless. That's a big one too for uh, our decorators out there. Checking the pet bowl will now show a text bubble with the pet's name. Added a post-fishing sparkling text to indicate when you've caught something for the first time. Torches can now be placed on sprinklers. Whoa! You can now sit in chairs during festivals. You can now move filled chests by hitting them twice with a heavy tool. You can now place flooring beneath most buildings. 
Crystallariums have to be now have to be removed and replaced before a different gem can be put inside. Nice. Daily billboard quests now have more informative tracker notifications when you make progress. Added a small check mark icon on special orders you've completed before. Ooh, that's nice. You can now skip the pet adoption scene. Thank you. That is such a long cutscene. That's going to help speedrunners quite a bit. That's like 30 seconds, 30, 40 seconds that you lose there. Reduce the amount of time you need to push against a pet before they start moving. That's, we have gone over that before. Reduce time for mini obelisk warp. Ooh, that's nice. Male farmers are no longer forced into wedding clothes on their wedding day, so you can choose your own outfit. Emptying the fish pond with fish still in it will cause the remaining fish to flop out of the pond. Slime hutch changes. You can now change the flooring of the slime hutch. You can now remove the starter incubator. That's a mod that's getting implemented. Slime balls no longer appear on crafted flooring. Uh, that's not a change. That's how they worked already. You can shift right click on an item in the toolbar to throw it out of your inventory. That's nice. You can now press the Y or N key to confirm or cancel the Leaf Festival confirmation box. Holding left shift, left control, and one when buying from a shop will attempt to buy a stack of 999. Other changes! Adventure Guild stays open until 2 a.m. That's poggers. It was previously 10 p.m. Gender-specific clothing variants can now be worn by any gender. If you have 12 hearts or more with your spouse, the chance they'll say a neutral dialogue in the afternoon is significantly lower. Penny's forced picnic event- oh uh oh uh oh Okay, I see any change to Penny's events, and I'm like, oh no. Forest picnic event and Leah's forest picnic event now only happen if it's sunny. NPCs now try to avoid walking through trees and other terrain. Cabins have been combined into one entry. The organize button now sorts items in a more intelligent way. You can now drink mayonnaise and jelly and eat pickles. Some colored objects now count as their color for key quest and die menus. Clam is now considered a fish. So just in case you didn't know, clam was like the only thing on the fish menu that wasn't considered a fish because you couldn't put it into a fish pond. I think now you can. Added more descriptive titles to daily quests. Added Cyrillic sprite text and some translated word pixel art text. Okay, so that's a language thing. Adjusted the date time money box in Chinese. The about page now shows the build number. Skull, caver Skull Caves? Skull Caves now have a chance to also play music from the upper mines. Ooh, that's neat. I'll make it more varied. Changed parent flap sound to be different from bat flaps. Pan now has a chance to yield bone fragments. You know, in the last few updates, they've seemed to like really push bone fragments. The order that you get forge enchantments is now unique per player rather than farm. Ginger Island shrine item pedestals are now normal items. Fix some NPC schedules that weren't previously applied. Lewis visits the library on winter Sundays. And then it's fixes. I don't know if I'm too interested in reading all of these. I'm not really seeing anything interesting it's a lot <laughs> good lord that's crazy that's a lot there's like a lot of like the big stuff was earlier on in the patch notes stuff like uh oh there's the trinkets that now like add stuff there's new machines golly goodness